I wanted to introduce you to MyCAD Tools. It's a gold partner product developed by our parent company, Vigitive. It's a selection of more than 50 SolidWorks tools. They're small, easy to use applications designed to be used for a particular purpose. And they're really there to kind of optimize the daily tasks you find yourself doing all of the time in SolidWorks. There's 50 of these tools available inside the software. Quite a range of different tools under different categories. It's not really possible for me to select all of those and go through them today. So what I'm going to do is pick out five of those tools which I think are particularly interesting and run you through actually what they are and what they do. So you can get a bit of an idea of what's available from MyCAD tools. The first one of those tools is Smart Drawings. It allows you to automatically create drawings from your SolidWorks models. It can run from a list of items or you can actually run it from an assembly project for example. We can get it to automatically insert things like annotations, uh, dimensions, bills of materials, for example, into our documents. And we can also get it to create additional sheets for things like sheet metal flat patterns, um, configurations, or possibly even weldment profiles. So if we have a look inside the tool, the first thing that we need to do is actually select the document to work from. Now we can pick the active file in SolidWorks and run from that. Alternatively, we can actually go ahead and select from a list of documents. So you can browse into the system and find a list of items that you'd like to run from. And we can select from those. Or alternatively, we can actually go ahead into the system and select from a folder and it will just pick up everything inside of that folder. The second thing we've got to specify is actually the template we want to work from. Now we've got templates of parts, assemblies, sheet metal items and weldment profiles so you can have a different layout for different types of document. There's quite good options for naming of files and we can also go ahead uh, and select the folder uh, in a number of ways in which we want to output the file. Now when it comes to the actual document itself we can choose what's going to be inserted and this is very similar to the model items uh, insertion options you've got inside of SolidWorks with the additions for annotations and dimension types we can also go ahead and choose different options for assembly drawings as well. So if we want to have something different at that level, we can do. When it comes down to the options at the bottom, we've got the ability to choose certain templates for a bill of materials, for example, or cut lists. And we can choose exactly where they get inserted on the page. There's a selection of more in-depth options if we want to have a look at those. Uh, the ability to change the scale of the views that we're outputting, output the um, sheet metal flat patterns. We can also choose to uh, adjust the weldment profiles we're outputting as well. If we click apply, it starts to run through the documents in the background and you'll see it create the separate items with the sheet metal flat patterns and the, and the drawings for parts or weldment profiles, for example, uh, and it'll produce all of the drawings that we need to use there. Now we can open those files up and I'm just going to show you what the actual output looks like. The first one is a flat pattern view from a sheet metal model. If we have a look at a weldment design you can see that the uh, separate profile types are split out into different pages. You'll also notice the cut list created in the corner there. We've also got a part drawing which is here. Now there is a little bit of cleanup to do but I'm sure you'll agree that the output from this tool is very good and potentially has the ability to save quite a lot of time. The second tool I want to pick up on is Smart Bill of Materials. It allows us to run through and create a bill of materials on a, on a machine that doesn't necessarily need SolidWorks installed. We can use it to insert properties into the table and we can also export the information out into a variety of different formats once we're done. This is a machine that hasn't got SolidWorks installed on it and we can actually run the selection from here uh, and that's what we're going to do in this case. Now you'll notice that we can adjust the properties for columns much like inside of SolidWorks we can pick up on custom properties uh, and adjust what's actually showing in the columns. We can also go ahead and put in more complex columns like the ability to calculate price from a number of other custom properties. We can create separate tabs for the different types of document that we might have inside this file uh, and it will create those automatically for us when we 
insert the bill of materials. Now the first tab you'll see is everything. It's a bit like having indented bill of materials with items split out. We've then got a separate tab for bought in parts possibly, which you've picked up in this case from a custom property. We've got separate sheets then for assembly and weldment designs and also drawings if you have any. In terms of the options here, we've got some quite good options to be able to set filters for what items appear on what page. So we can pick out the documents that we need to appear on the right tabs. And we can then also export the files out to a variety of formats. Now in this case, I'm going to export to Excel. It produces the separate tabs for us that we had in our original document. And you'll notice we can flip between those to be able to have a look at that same data. And this can then be saved out. In terms of the options that we've got available in this tool, there's some quite useful options to adjust the export options in here. We can also go ahead and set colors for the different document types that we have in this file. If we apply that, you'll notice that the output is very good. And it's something you don't actually get in Solid SolidWorks. It's instantly really readable and we can tell exactly what different documents are. So potentially another useful tool for a machine which doesn't necessarily have SOLIDWORKS but needs to access the list of components within an assembly. The next tool I'd like to pick up on is integration. It allows us to create custom tasks that we can run on a selection of documents. And these are very similar to creating a basic macro. They allow you to run across on a batch of files and we can use it to standardize our documents in Solid SolidWorks. The tool is very customizable and there's a selection of different conditions and operations that we can then run on our files. Now, if I have a look at this file that I've got open, it's a drawing document. It's on an old sheet format. I'd like to go ahead and update this to something a little bit more modern. So I'm going to create a job inside of this tool to remove those items. The first thing to do is to actually add the folder structure inside of which then we can add conditions to find the right files and operations that we can then run on those documents. Now in terms of the conditions, these are very similar to simple programming, it's if statements. Uh, in this case, I want to pick up if a document is a drawing. We can then also pick up if the document is of an older format, for example, perhaps one that was created in an earlier version of SolidWorks. I'm going to look for files that were created in SolidWorks 2017. You'll notice we can nest these statements so they're not run on all documents. Then we can go through and grab a condition. Now in this case we want to replace the sheet format. We can set that from a location in our system so we can browse to find the right file. Once we've found the document, we can then run it across all of our files. It's going to open SolidWorks because you've noticed the icon is shown in red. Now in terms of the other properties that we have here, we've got the ability to do things like change material, export files, change the component in an assembly. There's lots of different things we can run on our files. If we close down the documents we have open and choose to run that, it will then run through a selection of documents. I have sped this up, but it is running relatively quickly. It runs through about 300 files here, and it's doing it in about 4 minutes 30 seconds, which I think is very acceptable. Once the information has been output, we can then have a look at our document that we started with. And if we open the same file up, you notice the sheet format has now been changed to our updated, more modern sheet format. This tool is actually a very powerful one and gives the ability to run really customizable tasks to do a variety of different things. It's quite hard to show really the power of what this tool has available to it in a simple demonstration, but I would encourage you to take a look. The next tool I'd like to pick out is sheet metal manufacturing. I've been asked this question on tech support before, but it's how we export sheet metal flat patterns for the entire project that we happen to be working on. So it can run from an entire project structure and it can output automatically DXFs, DWGs and SOLIDWORKS drawings with additions for cut list properties if we need them 
and we can control the display of how the items are output in terms of whether they have bend lines or not. This is the project I'd like to run it on. You'll see a fairly complex sheet metal design. We can open up the tool from the top there and we can load in the current SolidWorks file. You'll notice the cut list properties have been brought through and we can choose to adjust which properties are being read into the document here. In terms of the options that we have available, we can customize the location that the file is being saved to and also the file name that's being used. We have the ability to go in and adjust which properties are going to be output onto the document as well, if any. We can also choose the file format that's going to be used and the scale of that view that might be output. And there's some really good options about how the views are grouped. In this case, I'd like to group all of my documents, which are the same thickness, into single files. We can then apply colors for the notes and annotations that we might have inside this document so that then we can filter those out when it comes to manufacture. If I click apply, it will then run it across our files and you'll notice it creating the drawings for us automatically in the background. Changing the notes to red so we're not seeing those so much in the output file. If we take a look at the output that's been produced here, we've got three different documents, one for each type of thickness. We've got 0.5, 1 and 2 millimeters. If we have a look at each one of those documents, you'll notice the sheet metal notes have been put in there. We've also got the bend notes displayed in that red color. So these are all very similar documents, but the output has produced them all really quickly in separate single documents. So a real time saver when you get to the end of a project, if you need to output a lot of sheet metal flat patterns from your projects. The next tool I'd like to pick up on is cutting optimization. It allows us to schedule cuts for our weldment designs, basically getting the most use out of the material that we buy in. It also allows us to optimize the supply of material that we happen to buy in, allowing us to see which is the most efficient length to buy in for our project. We can put in and reuse scraps within this tool, and it'll also calculate manufacturing times for us in a document which is output out of the back end. I'd like to run it on this fairly complex weldment design. Now we can open the tool up and we can use an existing SolidWorks drawing to run it from. In this case, I'm gonna run from this cut list. The tool is available to open from the top toolbar. Now, if I create a new project, the first thing to do is go ahead and enter some information. So we can enter in a project name and other relevant details. We can increase the quantity of documents required. So if we need more than one item output from this project and we can select the cut list to be used in this case. You'll notice it will read through all the profiles for us. It's got a fairly extensive list of different items shown in a database. I haven't had to create any of that information. It's all been added automatically for us. Once the information is, is read through, we can then change the color of the cut list items that we've got shown. So if we wanted certain items to be shown in a certain color, that's reasonably easy to do. We could say that a certain color needs to be blue, for example, and we can set that. We can also go ahead and change the profile orientation. If a profile needs to be a certain way around for manufacture, for example, we can go ahead and choose the profile type and then rotate it to get it to the right angle. If we require additional lengths inside of our cut list that aren't actually in our project, we can go ahead and select those. We can add in the length of item that's to be used. And also the quantity of items can be increased. So in a case where we don't necessarily have that in our project in SolidWorks, it can easily be added. Now the next thing to do is to actually have a look at the profiles we're going to buy in. And I'm going to do this per profile type. We can analyze for lengths to buy in between four and six meters. If we click the analysis button in the corner, it's going to look between increments of 100 millimeters. If I increase that to half a meter increments for lengths to buy in, 
then it will show us the most efficient lengths to buy in this case which is four and a half meters. So we can then set a compulsory buying length for four and a half meters if that's what we choose to use in our project. It means we're getting the most efficient use out of the material. If we then choose to output a report at the back end of this, it will then give us something very similar to a PDF document. It's got the separate cut list items split out. You notice the colors there. We've also got the uh, items shown with the lengths we're buying in in the corners of the cut list item. On the next few pages, we then got the scheduled cuts. Now you'll notice these have been split down with the scraps that are left at the end of that length of material. So we can choose to reuse those scraps in other projects if we need to. And we've also got the profile orientation shown in there as well. So a really powerful output that you can get out of this tool. And definitely has a real potential to save you cash if you are working with weldment designs. Now obviously there's a real selection of MyCAD tools available. I haven't been through all of those today, but there are other ones which I think are particularly interesting. I just want to pick out some of those before I finish this presentation. Assembly board allows us to automatically produce assembly drawing from our document and it'll have the separate items within our project all split out in separate views with the name of the item displayed below the view. So we can get a full list with a view of every item within our project. Clone components means we can continue working in SolidWorks and clone items rather than having to go back to Windows Explorer. We can pick up on a document or a selection of files and clone those really quickly within our project. Drive assembly is really good for mechanical designs. It allows us to pick out a range of movement defined by a dimension. And based upon that range, we can then pick out the envelopes for movement and also calculate trajectory points from that information. Select material allows us to filter down the material databases while working in SolidWorks. We can find the material that fits our needs for a specific job. Once we've found the right material, we can then customize hatching and scale, and we can also input custom properties all really quickly within the document. A clean project is particularly useful if we're working in a project folder structure and we need to get rid of some of those older files that perhaps we're not using anymore. Perhaps those items we've built up through the concept phases of our development. It will go through and it will pick out any documents which aren't currently being referenced by our assembly and we can have the option to remove those from our project. So obviously there's a real selection of MyCAD tools available. They come as a single package and like I said earlier on, it's a partner product for SolidWorks. Now if you want to get a trial to actually give this software a go, you can get it in a number of different ways. There's a link shown here on the screen you can also go ahead and have a look inside your booklet and you'll find that same link written down. Or if you do a Google search for MyCAD tools and follow the links to moveapps.com. So there's a really good selection of tools there and I really would encourage you to take a look at those and download a trial.